Hello everyone, my name is Lou Bartolo and today my presentation is on Versa. What is Versa? We will first get started with the history behind Versa and what is Versa. Versa is the abbreviated abbreviation for vancomycin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Vancomycin is a glycol peptide or a sugar peptide that was first isolated from the Borneo jungles out of soil samples there. The first case in the United States was first discovered in Michigan in 2002. From 2002 until 2012, over the 10 year span, only 12 additional cases were reported here in the United States, with a few more cases that were reported in the countries of Iran, India, Europe, and Latin America. Europe's first case was actually reported just this year in May of 2013. The overview of Versa includes the infection of staph is a condition by bacteria or simpler germs. The infection occurs when staph becomes resistant to vancomycin, a very strong antibiotic. Vancomycin is the choice drug for MRSA or it's also used when mild antibiotics are not working on other infections. But the problem with increased usage leads the patients having a diagnosis of MRSA. Staph can be commonly found on the skin. It can be simple as a pimple or it can be something larger and more severe like a boil. And it can also be found in the nose Here's a chart that I created with the actual 13 cases that have been reported here in the United States from 2002 until 2012. As you can see, most of the cases have been um, in Michigan. The age range is anywhere from the 40s all the way up to the 80s. And it's almost a half 50-50 mix between male and female. I have included different sources of Versa, where, they were, where it was found anywhere from toe wounds to surgical site wounds. Also, what the patient's diagnosis was, and what was the underlying conditions of the patient at the time of diagnosis. And that shows you sort of that a lot of the patients was, a, was diagnosed with diabetes or obesity or some heart-related condition like hypertension or, um, you know, that, that can lead to other problems. But if you're not familiar with any of these different abbreviations or medical terms, I have included a glossary at the end of this presentation so it can be referred back to at your leisure. The evolution of Versa is really a chain reaction because Staphylococcus aureus has been around for a very, a very long time, many years, and at first penicillin would actually kill the bacteria. But then the staph infection became penicillin resistant. So in the 1960s, methicillin was created and it was approved to be used in the United States and it worked to kill the staph infection. But then in 1968, the first case of MRSA or methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus was discovered. And vancomycin at that point then became the first drug of choice for MRSA. But all this worked well until the late 1990s when the first report of VISA came into play. And VISA is vancomycin intermediate resistant Staphylococcus aureus. And what this means is that the vancomycin treatments weren't working up to par levels. And so they was working some, but not, again, not fully. So that's why it became vancomycin intermediate resistant. And then, where we are today in 2013 um, is where you see Versa and this has been going on since 2002. Um, so Visa was from the late 1990s until the first diagnosis of Versa in 2002. Um, this diagram here just kind of shows how Versa really is a chain reaction. How you start off with the staph infection, penicillin worked in the 1940s, and then you have sometime around 1947 is when the penicillin became resistant to staph. But in 1958, it was vancomycin was, was discovered and put into use. And then in 59, methicillin was put into use. 
Uh, Methicillin was the drug of choice at that time for Staphylococcus aureus. But in 1968 is when the first discovery of MRSA came into play, and they switched to vancomycin for the drug of choice for, ver for MRSA. And then in 1996, VISA, and then in 2002, VERSA. So basically we'll add on here to another drug when it was created, and, and we'll start the link, the chain reaction keep going, or the links keep going. So how does one know if they really have VERSA? What testing can be done, and what does physicians and hospitals do? Well, from a microbiological standpoint, Staphylococcus aureus uh, requires greater than or equal to 16 micrograms per milliliter of vancomycin minimum inhibitory concentration, mics, for inhibition. Um, staph is a gram positive. It's cluster forming coccus in its yellow colonies on agar at 35 degrees to 37 degrees Celsius. The CDC has formed the criteria to identify versus strains, and um, they are broth microdilution, agar dilution, and e-test. There are five other methods, too, that I have listed here that can be used in order to test for Versa, including Microscan Overnight and Synergies Plus, the BD Phoenix system, the Track Mic Plate, the Vitac 2, the Disc Diffusion and Vancomycin Screen Agar Plate, which is brain and heart infused agar containing 6 micrograms per milliliter of vancomycin, and also samples from the skin, pus, or mucus from the nose can be used. So we have the microbiology side, well now he's the biochemistry side of VERSA. The virulence factor of VERSA produced penicillin binding proteins 2 and 2 prime and reduced cross-linking through glutamine amidation. And then the VERSA strains resistance actually come from the Van A gene on a transposable element, which is the TN1546, and is carried on a plasmid. So to describe a transposable element, it's the segment of DNA that can move around different positions and what may actually cause a mutation or which can make it jump genes, like some people may say. Um, the plasmid is a small DNA molecule that is physically separate from and it can autonomously replicate within a cell. The plasmid is also usually circular and double strand. This image here is from the New England Journal of Medicine and it's just a little bit, I just wanted to kind of show basically in two how you have the cell wall and how you have the vancomycin that cannot bind to the cell wall. Um, and then in the third C you see with the the vancomycin and the cell wall, how it actually gets stuck, and it's just trapped within the cell wall there. So I just wanted to kind of show in a diagram of what was just said on the previous slide. The pathogenesis and risk factors of VERSA. So VERSA can be found in patients that are suffering from pneumonia, endocarditis, osteomyelitis, infected surgical wounds, um, urinary tract infections, skin lesions, meningitis, and different issues with the bloodstream, basically infections of the bloodstream or septicemia. Um, also infections can include anything of the skin, blood, lungs, heart, and brain. Some high risk groups that Versa will, you know, can really affect in a negative way is your HIV AIDS patients, the elderly, infants and children, dialysis patients, and along with dialysis patients, it can be patients that are not on dialysis, but in the end-stage renal failure, and also uh, post-surgical patients. So you have this Versa infection here, so what are some risk factors you have to watch out for? Well, some is either present or previous infections of MRSA, but preceding the vancomycin treatment. Um, also, intravenous catheters, underlying conditions like CHF or congestive heart failure, and skin ulcers, and diabetes. Along with this is poor hygiene. You have to wash your hands after caring for Versa patients, and not washing the hands after caring for them um, can lead to an infection for you or also another patient or another family member. 
So the prevalence of VRSA is really rare, globally rare, with only 13 cases in 10 years here in the United States, and then only a few more reported cases in the other countries I had mentioned earlier in the presentation. The majority of the cases are in the United States and also in Michigan. Um, with time, VRSA will become more widespread. Also, there are more diseases today, and they're becoming more resistant to current drugs. New drugs are just not being produced fast enough in order for the number of illnesses that people are suffering from. Matter of fact, the U.S. is even still using drugs that are 50 years old in today's modern medicine. So signs and symptoms of a patient suffering from MRSA, I'm sorry, from VERSA, um, the skin and soft tissue becomes red, painful, and warm to touch. They can experience fever and chills, tachycardia or high um, heart rate, malaise, cough, chest pain, nausea, vomiting, and shortness of breath. So infection control. Well, how can one fight this, you know, can keep this infection under control for their self, for prevention? Make sure you wash your hands all the time after contacting the patient. Make sure you wear gloves, gowns, masking. See also if the patient can be in isolation and also with their dedicated equipment, such as an, as an example, a um, disposable stethoscope. Make sure that all wounds and boils stay clean, they stay covered, and um, they're covered with dry bandages. If the patient is being seen as an outpatient, Ask the office or the uh, physician if he can, the patient can be seen last, um, so that he's not he's not um, being in contact with other patients or as many people in the different clinics or hospitals and so forth. And also, if they have an isolation um, area or isolated room that the patient can use, which I do know that some dialysis centers do have isolation rooms. And then also when cleaning, make sure to use alcohol or chlorine-based disinfectants when actually cleaning hard surfaces. If you're washing any clothes or towels or any bedding, use hot water with soap and also dry on the hot setting or a high heat setting. So the drug therapy that's used for Versa, um, they have several different drugs here that can be used for adults or in adults and they can respond pretty well to it um, with the right treatment and dosage and so forth but for our little ones the pediatrics there's only one particular treatment and that treatment is actually a combo and it's it's mixes of uh, lonzolid with ampicillin and it has to include genomycin or streptomycin so it's basically this child is getting three drugs um, for this one um, illness or this one infection as of the adults have several other ones to choose from and only one type of treatment. So we have all these different drugs now available and we're saying that they're not producing enough but hopefully soon the FDA approves these four additional drugs here um, they are pre they are now in clinical trials, so hopefully it's soon they are fully approved. And maybe within this, they are doing some research on pediatric treatments, because um, it would be great if we could try to eliminate that combo of treatments for pediatric patients. And uh, like I said, there are there are several more drug choices available for adults and pediatrics. And then of course, any patient that's suffering from Versa will be resistant to penicillin and, of course, vancomycin. So these patients are taking these drugs maybe for the first time um, to fight Versa, and they end up with side effects or adverse effects. And these effects can actually be infuse-related, such as hypotension or low blood pressure. They can have wheezing, dyspnea, which is shortness of breath, or they can be eukaryotic, which is having a rash. They can feel, they can experience nephrotoxicity, which is renal failure, or they may be in renal failure already. They can experience gastrointestinal problems, such as pseudomembrous colitis. So, 
In addition to the other adverse effects, we have irotoxicity, which is vertigo, dizziness, and also tinnitus. Um, the patient can also be suffering from um, hemato hematopoietic problems such as reversible neutropenia and a granulocytosis, which is severe leukopenia or low white blood counts. Some other adverse side effects that are probably more common ones would be fever, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, chills, or rash, or also inflamed veins. So just in conclusion, um, this illness is very rare, globally rare. Versa will start to show up more in the future, so more drugs need to be studied now, and then more strains will be identified in the future with, a diff with advanced screenings um, that may start to be in test it out there. This illness can be deadly if not treated in the proper way and make sure to take proper precautions when caring for Versa patients. I actually spoke, I had the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Steve Solomon um, who's the director of CDC's Office of Antimicrobial Resistance and he reported to me that there's not a lot of validity to the little research that's completed to date because in the 10 year period they've only had uh, the actual the 13 cases in 12 years so there's not enough out there to study as far as um, the different needs of research purposes but as they progress with getting more patients they will take note more of what's the history and also what's the uh, family history what's the medical history on these patients to do more research and see what they can do to have more antibiotics um, manufactured. So here's the glossary I was talking about. If you don't know any of the abbreviations or any of the illnesses, medical terms, here they are that you can look refer back to. And just some final thoughts. Um, the studies that have been shown, um, I believe they do link a lot of them to patients with wounds just because they do have so many that have foot wounds and so forth. Um, they are the ones that are more susceptible to getting amputations and having um, other infections with other issues and they are in the hospital a lot. So I think there is some link to diabetic patients and versa. Also there is no significant difference between the men and women being diagnosed and treated for versa. And also, like we were just saying, better research results will be concluded with a larger sample of subjects and also a longer term study. Future studies will be conducted by the CDC and the NIH or the National Institute of Health as more cases become available. So here's for more information, you can contact the CDC or the NIH and they'll be more than happy to give you some information or what they have available or from time to time, um, check their website and see if anything changes there. Thank you for taking the time to look and listen, and I hope that you actually learned something, and if you have any questions, please let me know, and I'll be happy to answer them if I can. Thank you.